2022 was a particularly rough year with increasing inflation rates and the hike in fuel prices due to the Russo-Ukrainian war. Economies around the world deteriorated, and it was against this backdrop that the 53rd annual meeting of the World Economic Forum took place last month. The World Economic Forum discussed multiple concurrent issues like the climate crisis, trade, economy, and health, especially in light of the Ukrainian war. For those of you who might be unaware, the World Economic Forum is a coalition of people from around the world, industry leaders, and corporate elites that gathers every year to, as they say their mission is, improve the state of the world and shape global, regional, and industry agendas. Since the establishment of the forum back in 1971, a professor Martin Schwab has been the chairman of what the world is supposed to consider a recognized body for global economic affairs. For the influence it has on today's economy, Schwab has definitely succeeded in gaining both attention and funding for his organization. In this video, we'll be looking at how the WEF, chaired by Klaus Schwab, has a massive impact on the global economy and what exactly their motive is. Klaus Martin Schwab was born in 1932 in Germany to immigrant parents Eugen Wilhelm Schwab and Erika Eprecht. Eugen Wilhelm was the director of Escher Wiss AG, an industrial company and contractor for the Nazi Germany. Both of Schwab's parents were originally from Switzerland. Schwab graduated as a mechanical engineer from Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, having earned a doctorate in addition to another doctorate in economics from the University of Freiburg and a master's in public administration from the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University. From 1972 to 2003, Klaus Schwab served as a professor of business policy at Geneva University, after which he was considered an honorary professor there. He was also publisher of the Global Competitiveness Report, which is an annual document that looks into the potential for increasing productivity and economic growth of the world, written by a team of economists. Schwab has a few books published under his name. He co-authored several others, and most of his work in the economic field has made some consider him an evangelist for stakeholder capitalism. In one of his books, written in 2016, Klaus popularized the idea of a fourth industrial revolution, which gained criticism from notorious figures like Stephen Poole and publishers like The Guardian. The idea of a fourth industrial revolution relied on a concept called the Internet of Things, which most posited could be hackable and therefore inefficient. Even the Financial Times Innovation Editor commented on how lifeless and distant this book's solutions were to the concerns of the world that it almost seems like it was written by someone other than a human. But perhaps what Schwab is most famously known for is founding today's World Economic Forum back in 1971. The European Management Forum, as it was known up until 1987, is still being chaired by Professor Klaus Schwab and over the years has been faced with both criticism and support. In 2015, the self-appointed International Forum was recognized as an international body by the Swiss Federal Council giving it legal claim to privileges enjoyed by other international organizations. In 2003, Schwab appointed his intended successor for the WF, Jose Maria Figueres, as CEO. However, an undeclared receipt of more than $900,000 in consultancy fees from the French Alcatel communications firm and the controversy that revolved around it saw him giving up his position shortly afterward. In 2006, Transparency International highlighted this incident in their global corruption report. The lack of transparency concerning incidents like these has made many question the credibility of the forum that claims to be in servitude to the people. Schwab, who takes home a salary that exceeds $1 million, had previously declared that high management salaries were no longer acceptable, and it's incoherent claims like these that make most skeptic about him and his forum. The media continues to question his net worth and income, especially after the Swiss radio and television corporation SRF shed light into it, possibly being supplemented by untaxed contributions to the WEF. He has also been criticized for mixing up finances of not-for-profit ventures with that of for-profit businesses. For example, the WEF awarded a multi-million dollar contract to US Web in 1998, before Schwab took a board seat at the same company, claiming valuable stock options. Journalist Jürgen Dunch also criticized the WEF's financial disclosures as they lack transparency concerning the income and expenditure of the forum. The World Economic Forum, while vaguely brushing over serious concerns like increasing inflation rates, suggests very specific agendas to overcome other issues. The forum plans to replace the widely accepted democratic model of making decisions on behalf of the people with a model that is based on a self-selected group of stakeholders. This proposal of the WEF wasn't well received either. 
What seems obvious is that the common man is losing much of the control in terms of the economy, and it's the powerful and the rich that are enjoying the privileges. The Think Tank, a research institute that investigates policies that would have a global social effect, says that gatherings such as the WEF are silent organized struggles to capture dominance around the world. Due to the power and influence the WEF has on a global level, Schwab has managed to rub shoulders with leaders from around the world. In a 2017 interview, Schwab said that he was very proud to have young global leaders of the WEF like President Putin, Angela Merkel, and Justin Trudeau. It's having access to these cabinets and governmental bodies that gained him access to the political class and the secrets they hold. One of the ideas which he promotes in both his works and his book is modern enterprise management in mechanical engineering. It's the management of modern enterprise that should serve both shareholders and corporate stakeholders if the goal is to prosper and grow. From the ideologies the WEF propagates, it seems obvious that at least part of its money and influence is a result of the promises it makes to ensure that the powerful continue to gain more control and get richer. Jordan Peterson, a famous personality on social media and clinical psychologist from Canada, comments on this unfair advantage and said in a recent podcast with Joe Rogan that he intends to initiate a rival consortium to the WEF that doesn't just serve the best interests of a formerly self-appointed group of individuals individuals, but one that would serve the community at large, both poor and rich. Last month, the annual gathering of the World Economic Forum took place in Davos, with 50 state and government leaders, 200 cabinet ministers, and 1,500 business leaders representing 130 countries from around the world. This year's meeting was themed cooperation in a fragmented world, and as glamorous as it sounds, one cannot help but notice that it's only the powerful that get passage into this event. This year's forum saw these participants grapple several concurrent issues including the cost of living crisis, the ongoing war in Ukraine, the climate crisis, the growing food crisis, and the fourth industrial revolution. Economists and experts at WEF describe 2023 as a year of a polycrisis, a year which multiple global concerns have become so interwoven, making them all the more difficult to tackle. The dilemma that they faced was whether to invest more on protecting citizens from the crippling living costs or to increase interest rates, risking a global recession. For the second consecutive year, Russia was left out of the gathering, while Ukrainian President Zelensky addressed the pressing issues of the conflict via video. The Global Risk Report published prior to the gathering by the WEF states that the climate issue is one of the most severe threats in the short term, but one which the world is the least prepared for. But the climate crisis has been on the Davos agenda for almost a decade, and it hasn't been properly discussed to reflect the importance they attribute to it. This year, too, it was pushed down the list of priorities with other issues like the Ukrainian war and fuel costs taking precedence. Meanwhile, insiders from the WEF expressed their distrust toward the 82-year-old Mr. Davos, i.e. Klaus Schwab, and claimed that there is no system of proper succession for the role of chairman. A group of present and former members of the WEF reported to The Guardian that Schwab was a law unto himself and had surrounded himself with nobodies who were incapable of running the organization he founded. They also said they're hesitant to reveal their identity as Klaus is very well connected and can make life very difficult for them if they ever decided to leave the WEF. Despite these criticisms, both internally and externally, leaders around the world are still counting on the WEF to provide solutions to the problems that have plagued the global community. With a system that lacks plan and proper management, and one that's obsessively looking for governance, it's very likely that the world could prosper and get rid of corruption. Let us know what you think in the comments section below.